Let's try and unpack this, right? I'm gonna do it, mm, we did half size, we did third size. I wonder if you can think back to when I gave you the coastline paradox. I'm gonna try this way, a third size, okay? Now, hold on a second. When you just take a line, right? If you divide it up into thirds, into thirds, you should get three of them, right? If, on the other hand, I took a square, a two-dimensional object, if you divide it into a third chunks, you should get nine of them. Right? Okay, watch. We actually did this before. What portion of this cosh curve, part of the snowflake, what portion of it is a third? Remember how I um, said, look, all of these little cubes, right? It's half the height of the original cube, half the width, half the depth. What's a third here? Hmm, yeah. It's from the third to the... It's just horizontally across, right? Do you agree with that? Like this, this is a third because that distance is exactly the same as this distance and this distance. There's three of them. I've divided up into a third, right? But then a problem emerges, and we did this before with the coastline when we start counting. When I start thinking, how many of these things have I got, right? Are there three of them? No, there aren't. Are there nine of them? No, let's count them. Ready? Here we go. I'll do the first one. There's one. Okay. The easiest other one to spot is this one over here, because it's symmetrical. There's two. Okay. Now, what do we have up in here, right? When you go at an angle, there are two of them. There's one here. There's number three. And then there's this other one here. There are four. Hold on a second, let me just write this down according to this scheme that I've got here, right? I have four, oops, wrong color. I have four objects that are a third the size. Four objects that are a third the size, right? I don't have three, I don't have nine, and I definitely don't have 27, okay? so. Where does the dimension come into this? How can I use this to calculate the dimension, right? Have a look at which number in each time that we went through one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, have a look at where the dimension appeared, right? With the line, the dimension appeared here. You see that? It's that power, one. Then it appeared here, two. Then it appeared here, three. And then you told me if we had a four dimensional thing, they call it a hypercube, by the way, it would be four. Okay? It would be 3 to the power of something. 3 to the power of something. Hold on a second. 4 is not a nice neat power of 3, right? When we're trying to solve something we don't know, mathematicians tend to give it a name, right? So there's some number. When you get 3 to the power of that number, you get 4, right? If you get 3 to the power of 2, you get 9. If you get 3 to the power of 3, you get 27. 3 to the power of some other number gives you 4. Now you have a calculator there, right? I'm going to teach you how to get this exactly in a second, but you don't need to get it exactly to know roughly where the number is. It's clearly between 1 and 2. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Right? Try some numbers. Put in some decimal places in there. 1 and a half, 1 and a quarter. Give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah. See, how, see how close you can get when you do 3 to the power of something equals 4. How close can you get to 4? We, we will in a second. We will in a second. It's just not everyone's done them, so that's why. Can anyone get within... Um, who can get within one decimal place? Who can get 3.9 or 4.1? Hands up. Yeah, we've got a few. Can anyone get within two decimal places? Can anyone get like um, 3.99 or 4.01? Can anyone get that close? Yeah. Ah, pretty close, pretty close. Okay, let's see. Um, Ryan, what was your number for x? 4.01. Wait, hold on. No, what was your number for x, the power? Oh, yeah. 1.26. Oh, 3 to the power of 1.265. 265. Okay, and you got 4 point? 0 0.01. 0.01. Did anyone get closer yeah. than that? Yeah, what'd you get? Well, um, 4.0001. Okay, what was your power that you stuck up there? Uh, 2619. Two six one nine. Okay, right now we can play this game for a little while, right? <laughs> Clearly, there's a better way of doing this. But before we just move on, can I just conclude what we just did? 
We know what one-dimensional objects are and two-dimensional objects. You are somehow telling me that this object is neither one nor two-dimensional. It's got a fractional dimension? What's up with that? Okay, now, let's work out what this actual number is. This is sort of, um, spoilers, a little bit. This is something we're going to be covering, you're going to be covering later, okay? See how this is a, an equation in index form, okay? It's an equation in index form. This is not an easy problem to solve when you're just punching in numbers, right? So we rewrite this in a totally different form. We write it like this. If you make x the subject, right, we introduce this thing called a logarithm. Some of you might have heard this word before, okay? You write it like this, and I'll tell you what it means. Okay, that's read out, x equals log base 3 of 4. Let me try and explain what that means because you'll get it in more detail later. I just want to introduce the idea. Okay, base 3, that's the base over here, right? 4, that's the number you're trying to get to. Okay, so it's like 3 raised to some power gives you 4. And it's about 1.2619, okay? okay? Now how you do that in your calculator, what you need to punch into your calculator, because you have a log button there, is punch this in. Log 4 oh, divided by percent. log 3. Okay, can you do that? What number do you get? You should get a whole bunch of decimal places. When you do log 4 divided by log 3, what are you getting? 1 point? 1.26185. 8, 5. Nine, Give me a few more. 9, 5, or so we can see why William was so close. Right? William had 1.2619. That's within the... Yeah. 10th, 100,000th, 10,000th of a unit, right? That's why he was able to get so close, right? Yeah. Do they have this, uh, do they call this number, like something? This, you mean that number? Yeah. Uh, it's, the name it has is log base 3 or 4. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. that's its name, okay? Um, so, what have we just established, right? This is a fractal, right? Uh, it looks like a line, right? Like I, I drew it, I drew the whole thing without picking up my marker, right? It takes up space in two dimensions, kind of. But when you crunch the numbers in this scheme of measuring dimensions, you get something else out. Okay? Now all, frac uh, all fractals do this. Remember this guy? Remember this guy? Do you remember this one? What was he called? <coughs> this was the Sierpinski triangle, right? Now, without drawing it all over again, right? You can see it's in, some of you have it in your book, okay? Can we do this same process? Can we do this same process? What size have I divided up? What size is the fractal getting smaller by? Think about it. For example, here's, here's a new copy, this one here. That's a new copy, a smaller copy of the whole fractal, right? Small. How, f how far in? Now, think carefully. I think this, this width of the new smaller triangle is exactly a half the width of the big triangle. Because look, I've got two of them right there. So it must be a half, right? How many such half-sized objects do I have in Sierpinski's triangle? And the answer is I've got one there, and then I've got another one here, and I've got another one here, okay? So I have, for this guy, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to go up here. I have three objects that are, what size? They're half size. Half size. Okay? Now going through this same process, what I want is 2 to the power of some number should give me 3. Now going back through, even if you don't fully understand what's happening here, right? The way you get x is you say it's log base 2 of 3, which in your calculator is log 3 divided by log 2. What is this number? 1.5-ish, right? Again, it looks kind of like a two-dimensional object, but it's, it's not really, right? It's like a, a one and a half dimensional object, okay? So when we have a look at dimensions, right, what you're now breaking apart is this idea of fractal dimensions.